August this year, our oldest son Joseph celebrated his 40th birthday and to mark the occasion we made a video with the help of Jonathan from church of his life. And because we adored him parents, we've watched it back many times since. It never fails to bring a lump to our throats. But when we get to the end, I always think, no, that can't be right. How did that happen? We've actually got a son who is 40 years old. No, that can't possibly be true. This is a condition I believe is called being in denial, an unwillingness to admit the truth that yes, I am, we are getting on a bit now. I get that same feeling when I think about Andrew stepping down from the ministry. Back in April, when we came to that decision, it was a real God moment. And in my heart, I'm absolutely sure it's the right thing to do. But in my head, sometimes I quite can't quite take it in. Are we really at this point in our lives? I ask myself. Yes, we are. We've been together over 44 years in total. And like all couples, have had ups and downs along the way. Over these lockdowns and restrictions, we have been with each other a lot. Andrew reckons I'm like a poacher's dog. Wherever he is in the house, I'm not far behind. I guess I'm a bit obsessed with him. And I suppose... When I think about it, I've spent most of my life following him around. But seriously, I had no idea all those years ago that our life would turn out as it has. But it's been an adventure and I honestly wouldn't change anything. Well, maybe one or two things. We've got our two beautiful boys, Joe and Nick who we are immensely proud of, two lovely daughters-in-law, Louise and Jude, and of course, Granny's Joy, Imogen, Scarlett, and Jack. In the places where we have lived, the Ronda, Newcastle, Newport, and Aberdeer, we have been privileged to share fellowship with some wonderful people. To serve in the ministry is a great honor but it does bring its challenges sometimes. I mean, often. And I want to thank those who have stood by us through thick and thin. And even when we've got it wrong, they've helped us to get back on track. It's true as well, and this is a time, to be honest, that over the years there have been a few not so wonderful people too along the way. But I find myself thanking them also, because I realise that in a strange way, they have helped shape us and bring us closer to God. And that can only be a good thing, although it may not feel like it at the time. Pastor Ken Reese and Mrs Reese were great young people's leaders back in the early days, and also our local pastors. Luther and Mrs Phillips, our own um, Gildas Thomas, Robert and Mrs Hughes, David and Mrs Vaughan. I would like to thank them today for the massive part they have played in our lives. At a time like this, I think you get very nostalgic, at least I have. I find myself looking back all the time, particularly to my childhood. I am one of five. I've got three older brothers. Oh, I've had three older brothers, John, Terence and David, and a little sister, Alison. And when we were young, it seems as if our whole life revolved around our church, the Bush Mission in Clidock Vale. I have so many memories of anniversaries, Sunday school trips and parties. It was a great church to grow up in, and I will always be grateful for the grounding I had there, particularly from my Sunday school teachers, Mrs. Price, Angie Reaney, and later on, Colin Gibbs. When you come to a major change in your life, you want to share it with the people you love most. 
But as you get older, it's inevitable some of these precious people are no longer with us. This has been particularly poignant during our time in Aberdeer. When we arrived, Andrew's dad, Tom, had just passed away after eight months in hospital, having had a stroke. And within the last two years or so, my mother Beryl, brother John and Andrew's mother Rita, as well as two very close friends, have all passed away. Grief has taken its toll, but I thank God this morning for his promise to be with us in the dark valley and for his comfort and strength. In the months before my mother passed away, age 93, she shared more openly with me the impact losing her mother when she was just a young child had on her. After telling her story, which was painful, she would say, when I look back, I know God's hand has always been on my life. My mother's story is very similar to our own Mrs. Darches in our church in Aberdeer. She also lost her mother as a young girl and it completely changed the course of her life. One day when we were talking together about this, she said exactly the same thing to me. I know God's hand has always been on my life. This is a great thing to be aware of and I feel so blessed this morning because I too can trace God's hand on my life. I look back and know that even when I was far from him, he was always looking out for me. Christmas is cancelled. That's a headline we've seen a few times in the past few weeks. I don't think that's possible, do you? Today is the first Sunday of Advent when we start preparing to celebrate the birth of Jesus. And not even a pandemic can change that. Jesus came, that's a fact. He came because he loves sinful people like me and wants to, and wants to be in a relationship with us. One of my favourite carols is Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. But what's amazing is we don't have to do anything at all because Jesus has done it all. He came to earth as that tiny baby and at 33 he offered himself as the perfect sacrifice for our sin on a cross. Because there was no other way. It cost him everything, but it was a price he was willing to pay because he loves us so much. Our part is to receive the gift of salvation he offers, and it's not just to those who attend church. The Bible makes it clear, it's for everyone. As you can see, there is a lot of stuff whirring around in my mind at the moment, ranging from being in denial, nostalgic, blessed, humbled, thankful, emotional. But going forward, what I definitely am is confident. At the beginning of this month, my last pastor in Newport, Derek Hopkins, spoke in our virtual church meeting about a God who doesn't change. Not long after that, my next pastor, David Lewis also encouraged us in a Zoom meeting to put our trust in Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. You know, there are lots of unknowns about the future. I'm not exactly sure how my life is going to pan out from you, but I'm confident of this. God doesn't change. He is faithful. He's been faithful in the past and he will be exactly the same in the future. And to him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen.
Well, good morning. When Pastor David asked Joyce and I if we would like to say a few words today, I'd not imagined how difficult that would be. Some would think, well, that's the first, where I would struggle to find the words. I'm so grateful to Joyce for saying what she said because it covers so much of my own reflections too. Our appreciation for the many people the Lord has used to help shape us in our spiritual journey. Please don't think that the brevity of these words are in any way a lack of appreciation, rather the very opposite. I have indeed a heart that's thrilled, filled with gratitude to the Lord for who he is and all he has done. David's words in Psalm 34 and 3, O oh, magnify the Lord with me, let us exalt his name together, capture the very essence of how I feel looking back over the 63 years of my life, well almost 63 years. 46 of them has been a follower of Jesus Christ, 44 of them have been in church leadership and 32 of those years in the pastorate and I can say today just as I step down from the pastoral ministry or magnify the Lord with me let us exalt his name together. I'm grateful for the, for the privilege of being your pastor in Aberdeer and Cowbridge in addition to the nine previous other congregations that I served in ranging from the Rhondda, the North East, the West Country and Newport. I'm honoured to serve within the Apostolic Church in a variety of ministries alongside so many colleagues. More than that, really, friends and brothers in arms, who I highly value. This includes colleagues from other denominations who have made fellowships so very precious. I've been privileged to represent our movement abroad through the Ministry of Action Overseas. It was a boy or dream fulfilled by visiting so many nations, but above all, to get a sense of God's great love for the whole of the world. That's been exceptionally wonderful. To have played a part in supporting brothers and sisters who've actually inspired me and at times put me to shame. For they stand for the gospel in harsh and difficult places, ranging from Sri Lanka, Pakistan, India, Latvia and Romania. I owe a debt of gratitude to my late parents and wider family. In many ways, ordinary people who pointed me very clearly to an extraordinary God. Along with Joyce, I say a big thank you to those dedicated Sunday school teachers, youth leaders and Bible teachers for their invaluable contribution, along with the number of pastors Joyce has mentioned. I really want to uh, want my sons Nick and Joe to know how much I love them and recognise that the call of God implicated them to moving home facing change, sensing and feeling the pressures we were faced with. I am so proud of you, as you have grown into good men, husbands and fathers. To Joyce, yes, it has been an adventure that has made huge demands of you to adjust so many, many times. Your sacrifice during the many months that we spent apart during my prolonged overseas mission trips. Your loyalty to stand with me in the gospel has been outstanding. More than anything, for making me laugh and sometimes to cry, usually at the same time. The Lord has used you more than anyone to keep me grounded, humble and to some extent organised. For being my biggest critic and my best a most loyal supporter. I thank you and you know that I really love you. Above all, I want to thank my Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. For like you, 
have experienced the extravagant grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. That although he was infinitely rich, he impoverished himself for our sake, so that by his poverty we could become rich beyond measure. So as I step down from the pastoral ministry, as I look to the Lord for changes again in the future, I can honestly say, along with King David, oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Hello and welcome to Park Central Church Aberdeer and Vale Church Cambridge's online church service today. We have a very different but incredibly special service today where we'll be thanking and celebrating Pastor Andrew and Joyce's ministry over the last <clears throat> um, many, many years and their commitment and dedication to the local church, to the National Apostolic Church, as well as internationally through Action Overseas. You know, it's a shame that we are unable to meet in person today and gather to honour both Andrew and Joyce. And despite several people taking part in today's service, it was just impossible to capture the thoughts and thanks of everybody who would want to express their gratitude today. I hope everybody's encouraged by the messages you're about to hear, but especially Andrew and Joyce. Please know that you are both extremely valued and loved by countless people and your impact and influence has been far reaching and felt by many. Enjoy. Hi everyone, it's so good to be part of this service of appreciation for um, Andrew and Joyce and the years of ministry that they've given to the Apostolic Church. Uh, but more importantly, uh, unto the Lord. And uh, God is no man's debt, uh, and I know God is going to richly bless you in these years of, of uh, retirement as you step into new spheres of ministry, as you step into um, uh, time with family and um, time for each other. So um, uh, that's something to just look forward to, and we look forward to still doing life with you. We, we love you both very much, and uh, Hope to see you uh, flourishing in the new space that you're moving into. Uh, I just want to take this opportunity to just talk about you, Joyce, and just say how much um, uh, you are loved and appreciated for the great sacrifices that you have made. Um, it's uh, it's hard enough being married to Andrew, but uh, you have had to endure years of putting up with the Apostolic Church as the other great life love in his life, and. Um, uh, I, I I really admire you, and I think, uh, as many others will know, the, the the life of a pastor's wife is never easy, and um, you have uh, had a been an amazing example to other individuals who have watched you and observed you and the way that you have handled difficult situations and good situations. You've been very consistent. You've been you, and that's the most important thing. And uh, I think you've modelled something wonderful. Andrew, you've heard me say on many, many occasions um, uh, my appreciation to you personally and on behalf of the Apostolic Church. So uh, as the season draws to a close there in uh, Park Church, Aberdeer, and you move into this new season, God richly bless you and stay in touch. We hope to see lots of you and to hear great stories of how God is using you and blessing you. Love to you both. Bye-bye. Hi everyone, just wanted to say a big thank you to Andrew and Joyce for their ministry in the Apostolic Church for the last 30 years or more. Uh, I think it started all 32 years ago back in the Rhonda uh, when Andrew was ordained and uh, the journey has taken him to the northeast of England, um, back to South Wales, to Newport and then on to Aberdeer. And uh, thank you, Andrew, for your ministry. It's been much appreciated. Your preaching ministry is of a very high standard and uh, we've all benefited from that. And um, thank you for your friendship to me personally. And um, I pray that you'll have the next chapter of your life will be really blessed and will be significant for you. So thank you for your ministry among us and uh, myself. And on behalf of the NLT, we want to say a big thank you to you and Joyce. Trust you'll both enjoy good health. Uh, lots of fun with the grandchildren. 
and uh, and I pray you will just uh, continue to proclaim Jesus uh, in your life together. So the Lord bless you. Amen. Hello, everyone. I'd like to use this opportunity to say a few words um, of appreciation for uh, my pastor, my friend, my brother in Christ, Pastor Andrew Jenkins, on the occasion of his retirement from ministry in the Apostolic Church. Pastor Andrew, Apostle Andrew, my brother, Baron, um, I want to say that I, you're a man of God, a man that I appreciate very much. I want to use this opportunity to thank you for uh, your support for me personally and your friendship during my years, my eight years as uh, the national leader of the Apostolic Church in the UK. Um, only God knows uh, the depth of uh, appreciation in my heart for the way that you cooperated uh, whilst you were serving um, in action overseas and also whilst you were serving the national leadership team. Um, you are a, a man, um, an Israelite in whom there is no guile. Uh, you're a man that I, I can trust. You're a man of great wisdom measured in your approach to things, a man who feared God, a man who cared passionately about uh, mission, about the things of God, but also about the apostolic church. So I want to say thank you. Um, thank you also for your friendship and thank you for uh, taking me to the Scarlet's game. Uh, on the, that time that I came um, over to Swansea to minister of the weekend, really appreciated that time going away and uh, watching the game of rugby. I think it was against Ulster. Um, so I want to thank you for those uh, little snippets of memory. I um, also want to say thank you to Joyce for um, the support as well that she has worked alongside you in serving our movement and serving God through our movement. As you go into retirement, I know that you're not going to be retired um, I see it as a repositioning um, of your ministry in the kingdom. My prayer is that God will cause you to go from strength to strength, that as you move into new arenas, that God will use you to touch and transform lives and cause his kingdom to come here on earth. And uh, you will continue to be a blessing um, to humanity, a blessing to the apostolic church, and a blessing to the world at large. God bless you. In Jesus name. Hi everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to um to pay tribute to Andrew on the on the occasion of his uh, his retirement from from full-time ministry. I pay tribute as a colleague, yes, but uh, but more importantly today I want to pay tribute as a friend. You see uh, Andrew and I go <laughs> Go a long way back. We we first met as young teenage boys in the the church run youth camp that was held every year in Saint Athens down at the Vale of Glamorgan, and uh, it was in this youth camp that we developed a friendship, maybe because of the things that we had in common. We both loved sport. We both loved to have a laugh. We were a bit, both of us were a bit mischievous. In fact, we were banned, we were banned from the youth camp for life. But I reckon it was a case of mistaken identity. It should have been Eric Parker and Paul Ewells who were to, to blame for that. But, but also we were both valley boys. I'm from my stake in the Slimvy Valley and Andrew is from Truorchy in the, in the Rhonda Valley. So that friendship started there and, and developed and, and every year it was strengthened. Every year we would go to the youth camp, we would have that week together before the, the following week we would then spend it in a caravan in, in the Penagros Convention and then quite often every year we would go to the, to the AOG conference in Minehead, times when we would strengthen and develop our friendships. All these occasions, if you notice, were church-based. And uh, speaking for myself, that would have been my main reason for going to these, because it was part of the church. And 
I'm afraid I can't say the same for Andrew because it would appear that uh, the main motivation that he went to these places was to to chase girls. I'm sorry, Joyce. I know that that might be hard for you to hear, but you know the truth has to come out. Speaking of Joyce, I have to admit that I was a bit surprised when I when I heard that Andrew had started courting uh, a young lady from one of the churches in the Ronda, but then. When I thought about it, I wasn't so surprised because he had chased all the girls in the Apostolic Church and none of them had wanted anything to do with him anyway. So he had to sort of go further afield. It, it seems that uh, our lives uh, were almost running in parallel at that time, if you like. Andrew married Joyce and uh, and we went to their wedding and I married Sean and they came to our wedding. And uh, we both started our families at roughly the same time. And and we would visit each other's houses, you know, back and forth the Ronda to, to my steg. When we would visit Andrew and Joyce and the boys over the Ronda, we would travel by car from my steg to, to Triorchi. But when Andrew would come to, uh, to visit us, quite often, he would walk over, walk over the mountains. <laughs> Uh, and several times we would be uh, surprised by a knock on the door only to open it and find there's Andrew standing there having walked over from the Ronda. Not as surprised as he was, mind, because he thought he was just walking to Porth. But map reading was not really, not one of his strong points. But we'll, we won't see any more about that. <laughs> I mentioned that we, we developed that friendship because we had several things in common. But there was one other thing that we had in common as well. We both loved God, we both loved the Lord, and our heart's desire was to serve God in in any way that he would choose us to do. And over the years I've seen uh, God's hand on Andrew's life. I'm proud to be able to say that uh, although this is Andrew's retirement service, after many faithful years in service of the Apostolic Church, that I was there right at the beginning. And his ordination into the what was called then the lay ministry or the non-salaried pastorate of the church, and then a few years afterwards we were there at his farewell in Trialo, as uh, Andrew and Joyce and Joe and Nick moved from the 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 mining area of South Wales to the to the mining area of the northeast of England as he went to take up the responsibility of the the pastors pastor in the church in the newcastle area <clears throat> and although there was now many miles between us that friendship was was still there as a as a family and on a few occasions we went up traveled up to the northeast to to stay in their home there with them of course we would still see each other on church occasions Penagross, the convention being being one of them. And although we were getting older, <laughs> I don't think any of us, either of us, really wanted to grow up. And so for, for many years, we would um, almost force our, our ways, if, if you like, into the our son's five-a-side football team. So that, you know, during the convention, they would hold, uh, the youth would hold uh, a five-a-side tournament and Andrew and I would, uh, would blag our way into the team's um, and take part in the in the President's Cup. In fact, we won. I think we might have won the, the inaugural President's Cup. They actually presented us with a cup for that uh, for that tournament. But after the convention, I, I never saw the trophy again. Didn't even know where it went until many years later, when, when we moved to Newport, I saw it <laughs> on the shelf in Andrew's office. He pinched it and kept it there all all those years. <clears throat> it was around 2000, 2002, that the, the church relocated Andrew from the northeast of England back to the South Wales to Newport to pastor the church there in Newport. And at that same time, I, I came into the ministry and moved up to Hereford. So now, as well as meeting each other as, as friends, we would now meet as colleagues. Not just at the annual convention, but also at the at the staff conferences and at the the national council meetings and other events that the church would put on. 
And then in 2002, 2009, because Andrew was very much involved in the work of action overseas, I was relocated from Hereford to Newport to help pastor the church there and to, to free up Andrew so that he could focus on on his work with action overseas in Pakistan, Sri Lanka and and Latvia. It was <clears throat> excuse me, it was whilst we were in Newport that uh, Andrew planned a trip, or he mentioned planning a trip to, to go and visit the church in Latvia. And we came up with the idea of maybe running a, a road trip across Europe to go and see, to visit the church in Latvia. Initially, we planned to about four of us to, to, to go on and to travel across, but eventually, just Andrew and I in a Volkswagen Golf estate, travelling around 1,600 miles each way through seven countries in ten days. It was a it was a really great trip. We saw some great sights. We had some some fun. We we met the church in Latvia and developed um, closer ties with them. It was a it was a really great trip. And and we came back. Another contact we made in Poland that Action Overseas uh, developed and helped. It was a wonderful time. And uh, to be honest, if Andrew was to ring me up tomorrow and suggest doing it again, I would do it in a heartbeat. Although I'm, I'm sure it was Andrew's navigating skills that uh, made me drive the wrong way down a one-way street in one of the towns in somewhere in Lithuania. This may be Andrew's retirement service and many people I'm sure will be speaking about his ministry in and, uh, and to the church. But it would be remiss not to to say that Andrew's ministry in the church, especially that the area of his work with Action Overseas, wouldn't have been half as effective if it wasn't for Joyce. Joyce, you need a medal for putting up with Andrew for, for all these years, but, but more importantly, you should also be honoured for your readiness to support Andrew and your willingness to, to let him go on those mission trips that involved many times you having to stay home alone whilst he, he went away. Not many people might know that part of it, Joyce. Not, not many people will see that side of it. But you you did it and we, we pay tribute to you today that you were willing to support Andrew in his, his mission work. And I'm sure Andrew would, would be the first to say that he couldn't have done it without you. Time is limited, isn't it? You know, and uh, as it always is at this type of occasions, and this this occasion is much stranger than normal. I would I would much rather be in a full church and be able to say these things in person to you, to you both. Andrew, it's been a, an honour to work with you, especially in Newport, and to know you as a colleague. But it's been a privilege to know you and to call you my friend. Of course, th there's no such thing as retirement from the ministry, as if we know that. But I pray that, that as you step back now from the, the stresses and strains that uh, full-time ministry brings, that God would, would bless you both with many, many happy years of retirement together. God bless you both, and I hope to see you soon. God bless. Andrew and Joyce sending greetings and love from Leanne and I and all of Bracknell's Haberdackle, uh, saying thank you for your hard work and diligence, your leadership over many, many years of service. We, uh, we want to say and celebrate with you a huge thank you. So for the next season of your life, we pray God's very best on you trusting that you will know his grace, his compassion, his mercy and his great leadership as you navigate this next season. So onward, my friends, onward. Take care. Thank you for this great opportunity of being able to give a greeting to uh, Andrew and to Joyce. You know, uh, when you're talking about the Baron and the Baroness, where do you start? I don't know. But uh, 
I just want to thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Joyce, uh, for your friendship and also for your support uh, to us as a couple. Um, I think of the times we travel together, Andrew, when we were in uh, Myanmar and Vietnam. And I have this picture of Andrew <laughs> swimming in the swimming pool in Yangon. Uh, it's available for a price. Uh, bidding will start. All donations will go to Action Overseas. Uh, thanks also for the times that we came down to see you uh, in Newport uh, and also when we've been down there in, in Aberdeer. We really appreciate your friendship mm -hmm. and we just wish, want to wish you all the best as you both. Yeah, and I just want to reiterate what Mark has said really. Um, it's been fantastic uh, spending time with you over the last few years, um, especially eating together. Obviously the food has been fantastic but the company much better and we've just appreciated your um, your ears to, to listen to us and your senses of humour really. Um, also inspirational, we know that life has been tough over the last few years, especially with having um, elderly parents to, to care for um, and subsequently the loss, but um, your tenacity and your steadfast um, hope in God really has, has been an inspiration and we just commend that we commend you both for that um, and just wish you all the best for the future yes all the best and just one thing Andrew before I go those rugby tickets that you kept on promising me for the last five years six years even longer than that mate I'm still waiting and maybe in your retirement we are to go and uh, enjoy a match together bless you God bless Hi there. Hi. To you, Andrew. And Joyce. Andrew and Joyce. <laughs> uh, and maybe others tuning in to today. Uh, greetings from us here in West Wales. Uh, it's a rainy, rainy. West Wales today. <laughs> Pretty grey. But um, Prue and I are pleased to have this opportunity to express our, our love to you uh, and also our appreciation of you both. Uh, to do that ourselves personally. Uh, but also to do that on behalf of Kennelly Community Church, which you, Andrew, have had apostolic oversight um, for over, well, over these last recent years anyway. Andrew, uh, you know, rewinding back more than 50 years to our Rhonda days, 50 years, <laughs> you know, at that time as young boys and then as teenagers, uh, I think it would have been really hard then to imagine the journey travelled uh, up to this day you know those are on the days and times were all about us playing football together uh, and then our cars <laughs> outings parties family gatherings you know youth trips and, and church events uh, and a few too of our crazy adventures along the way <laughs> you mean like the camping when you took your tents camping for the weekend and you didn't even stay in it one night because it rained, they had to go home. <laughs> oh, it was more than rain. It Do you was remember, a, Andrew? It was a tornado. It must have had <laughs> certainly been a tornado. <clears throat> yeah, we um, yeah we were quickly back home. You see, that's a that's Welsh summer bank holidays for you. Uh, whose, whose idea was that, Andrew? But uh, some great adventures and, and great memories of those days of our youth. <clears throat> uh, and then, of course, neither of us could find another friend willing enough to stand next to us on our wedding days um, so we also became each other's best man as well uh, that was a joy <clears throat> but what we also shared is is a history of, of being influenced by a church fellowship that produced wonderful godly men and women in those days we had great examples in the faith and we were blessed to sit, sit under some remarkable ministry so here we are, Andrew, you have now served in ministry leadership for 32 years in various ways and, and locations. Uh, and that is a significant amount of time. Yeah. Uh, I believe that for 26 of those years, you have been in full-time ministry for the church as well. Mm. Um, and we acknowledge and very much appreciate and honour your dedication and such a time commitment. I wonder, Andrew, how many sermons you have preached? <clears throat> One or two? Perhaps a few more than that. 
<laughs> you know, I, I think I'm right in recalling that we, you know, you and I, uh, were launched into our preaching together, um, and it we were together on that first occasion, and we were each given ten minutes each to speak, and we had to do that one after another. It was in Tonopandi Apostolic Church uh, on a Sunday evening, I think. Uh, you know, and that church had one of the highest preaching platforms around. It was right up there. Uh, so we were high and lifted up for all to see. It was really scary. <laughs> we couldn't hide. And looking back, I was thinking, you know, it was a bit like a, an X Factor event, you know, like an X Factor preaching competition. You first and then me. <laughs> you definitely won. <laughs> but seriously, Andrew, you know, we and, and the churches you have ministered uh, at, I've been really blessed with your preached ministry, your scripture knowledge, and your communication of God's word too. Uh, but surprise, surprise, pastoral duties are much more than preparing and delivering sermons. Uh, and you've progressed to develop in, in giftings and skills that have enriched the church in many, many ways. Uh, and who would have thought that a boy from Aniswen would be taking the gospel and establishing ministries in some of the most ungodly and dangerous places of the world. Mm. But you did, you have, and that's what happens when anyone submits to the call and will of God. Mm. Yeah, that's right. And Joyce, for those years too, you have tra traveled this journey of ministry with Andrew not just as a support, but also using your own God-given unique talents. Yeah. And you have raised a wonderful family, which I'm sure has not not always been easy, especially with Andrew being away so much. And also as you were working too, yourself. We really appreciate and we honour you. Yes, we do. Mm. <clears throat> Absolutely. You know, no doubt there are, are many great stories of God's blessing and, and ministry highlights and successes you know in, in your life uh, they'll include two hard times and seasons when you have had to dig in to find the, the lord's grace and strength um, and you've persevered through um, through many dangers toils and snares you have already come well <clears throat> it's another day um, and god always has a place and a purpose for anyone who remains available. And um, mm. I, I'm sure you do remain available to the Lord. So uh, both, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, God bless you both. Yeah. Uh, keep preaching, uh, keep serving, keep going. Uh, and as you do, we will keep praying for you as you go. God bless you. Hiya both. Andrew, the day of your retirement from full-time ministry within the Apostolic Church has finally come. You have served the Lord and the Church with gladness, tirelessly, fearlessly, and with great compassion for the flock that has been given to your care. You have planted seeds of hope and love in people's lives, and you've truly made a difference. You have shown hospitality and you have given encouragement to many. You have been faithful to your duty in the preaching of the gospel of Christ and you've kept the primacy of preaching at the centre of your ministry. I count it an honour and a privilege to have been one of your colleagues in ministry and your wise counsel has been greatly appreciated. Thank you for blessing the churches under your care with humble leadership, heartfelt ministry and a deep love for the Lord. Thank you for the difference, Andrew, that you've made in the lives of so many, both as pastor, apostle and friend. And to you, Joyce, I want to thank you for being a great example as a pastor's wife. And Andrew would not have been able to do the things he has without you being at his side. I personally want to thank you and God bless you. Now as a story 
which is your life as a couple, opens its next chapter. May the God of grace richly bless you and watch over you. May the God of peace grant you peace always. And may the God of abundant joy shower you both daily. Paul Bendith. God bless. Bye. Bye. Hi, Andrew and Joyce. Brian Carlin here from Wolverhampton. Hello. Just wanted to wish you guys every blessing as you come to this monumental occasion of your retirement uh, from active ministry within uh, the National Church, the Apostolic Church UK. But of course, you know, we know there is no such thing as... Uh... No, it's just unpaid ministry after this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I would just really pray that God would bless you guys richly, uh, that the days ahead of you would just be filled with blessing, anointing, opportunity, uh, just for God to continue to use you and to prove his faithfulness to you. Well done, guys. Yeah. Uh, you've done a great job in your years in ministry. Andrew, I've got so many memories of serving with you on action overseas. Uh, but we'll keep in touch. Uh, you won't get rid of me yet. So uh, take care. God bless. God bless. you both. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Joyce. Hi, everyone. I'm very grateful for the opportunity today just to say a few words of thank you and honour to Andrew and Joyce. I've grown up in the Apostolic Church. I've always been aware of Pastor Andrew Jenkins. Uh, my first encounter with him probably was him tearing round the pitch on those pre-Penny Grows five-a-side football tournaments. Andrew very much making his presence known, chopping the opposition down at any given opportunity. But over the years we've grown to be good friends. What's particularly cemented that relationship is our trips to Sri Lanka together, and also to India. Uh, I remember the first time I was quite apprehensive about going on mission to that part of the world, never been before. And uh, on the way to the airport, Andrew rang me to say he'd lost his passport. I was going to have to go on my own and he would join me when he could. That was fun. Uh, it worked out. It was great. And those trips have deeply impacted me. Um, yes, the ministry experience was incredible. The people we met was great. The places we were able to visit and, and things we were able to do were wonderful. But uh, Andrew, I wouldn't have wanted to share those trips with anyone else. And on the mission field, you're an inspiration. People all over the world have such high regard and deep respect for you. Uh, you've undoubtedly left your mark uh, on the church worldwide in so many different nations. Every time I go to Sri Lanka still, everyone asks for Andrew. Everyone remembers your moustache. They have a smile on their face. They think you're amazing. And you've done a great work in Sri Lanka and many other nations. But you've been such... A blessing to me. Your influence has shaped and equipped my life. I'm grateful for the doors uh, and the opportunities that you've opened and space you've created. I know that your ministry and your life has impacted and touched and blessed many people. I know that because it's true of me. And so uh, I will always treasure those times of ministry abroad, the odd frolic in the Indian Ocean. Uh, we won't mention how we managed to get sun cream on each other's backs, of course. But Andrew, Joyce, deeply appreciate you both. Grateful for your ministry, for your friendship, for your input, for your support, for your love. I pray that as you step into a new chapter of life, the Lord will strengthen you, guide you, bless you. And that as you've poured out over so many years into so many lives, the Lord will pour in in the years ahead. God bless you both. Greetings in the precious name of Jesus. I'm Shehan Fernando, the national leader of the Apostolic Church in Sri Lanka. It's a great joy and privilege for me to share a few words about Apostle Andrew Jenkins. He visited Sri Lanka in 2005, just after tsunami, and he has fallen in love with our country. After the tsunami, he visited North through many difficulties to help the people who were affected by tsunami. Thus he showed us his love and compassion and how much he cares for our people. Not only that, over a decade he came and helped us, encouraged us and he was able to form a new mind scheme in the ministry of the Apostolic Church here in Sri Lanka. He became a good friend and a spiritual father 
to me and many others in our country. He was so compassionate for our people that he initiated a book project where he linked his local church and some other churches with poor communities among the Apostolic Church members here in Sri Lanka and helped poor children to have their school books. In that way, he was leading others to help hundreds of children in our country. Today, some of them are working and they still remember the support they received and what Pastor Andrew did to help them educated. He was a true apostle and a visionary leader. Not only that, he had a vision to support our Bible school, the Apostolic Church Training School, not only to develop facilities, he initiated to collect books from UK and develop our library. In that way we received hundreds of books which became a great asset for our workers and students. Over 120 students have studied in our Bible school and they are ministering in various parts of the island today. So Pastor Andrew is being remembered in various churches in Sri Lanka and we remember him as a person with sense of humor and love and also with strong and courageous leadership. Word cannot express enough gratitude for his ministry and what he did to help and develop the churches and ministers in Sri Lanka. Although his official retirement would be announced today, I believe that God will use him more and more to impact many people around the world as God used him already in Asia and other parts through the action overseas and his personal ministries. So we love Pastor Andrew and together with the Apostolic Church of Sri Lanka on behalf of all the pastors and believers I express our heartfelt gratitude and love towards you and also Sister Joyce together you made a difference in our country in our lives so we praise God for you and we bless you in the name of Jesus thank you hi Andrew um, sorry we can't be with you in person of course all this social distancing and lockdown has made it a very different state of affairs but I just wanted to send a message from myself and from folks at the Christian Centre. We've really appreciated your help, your support, your input as a congregation over the years. And personally, my friend, you have been really, really amazing in supporting and helping us through some very challenging and difficult situations. Personally, I counted it a real privilege to have you as a friend, not just as a boss, but as a friend, as a colleague, really enjoyed our times together. And um, it's really helped me personally along the journey. And I just want to say thank you as you end your official ministry um, in administrative duty. But of course, we know that you're not ending your ministry for the Lord and so I, I wish you all the best in retirement for what lies ahead and I'm sure that God is going to bless you and use you richly in this new season in your life but I just wanted to send this message to say how grateful and how much I appreciate all the input that we've had from you over the years I'm sorry we did record a message from the folks just um, saying hello and sending a wave unfortunately we've had some technical difficulties with that but all the folks from the congregation were so pleased to send their goodwill and just say you know all the best in your retirement thanks Andrew look forward to catching up with you at some point soon God bless
Hello. Hello. Hello, Pastor Andrew. Yeah. We are very, very privileged to speak to you today, and uh, we are very happy, and uh, we are very blessed, and we thank God that uh, God has uh, made it uh, possible that you were in Pakistan for many, many times. And uh, I remember the first time we met you in uh, 2005 or six, and uh, it is very good to get to know you, to serve with you, our own nation. And uh, there was a great time Pastor Tariq had with you traveling. Yes. And we have sent you the picture wearing Pakistani dress with uh, Alexander Ijaz, Pastor Tariq, Samuel Obed, and uh, three of them. And uh, we still remember all the hard work that you have done uh, for us, motivate other people, uh, sharing about Pakistan, showing the pictures and uh, giving them the stories of Pakistan, how we are living, what we are doing, how we are serving the Lord. And recently we are very blessed and we are very thankful to you and uh, to the Lord also. In this year, very difficult year, that uh, God has uh, opened the hearts of his people through you of uk that you motivated them and you supply the foods and uh, you make our families happy in villages in city and our church members they pray for you and they're very happy and not the last but we as a family are very happy to have a new motorbike and uh, we are traveling and Tarek is uh, driving as usual, as you know. So we are protected by the Lord and we thank God that you are praying for him, that may God protect him on that new motorbike and his Arslan. And he's also very happy and he can say thank you for all that you are doing this year for his education and for everything for my family and for the church of the Lord and for our church people. We are very, very thankful. And especially Pastor Andrew, we are very thankful to you for all your love, your big heart that you have always uh, taking us as your children. And uh, we still feel the warmth of your love in our heart. And we love you and we bless you and we miss you and we pray and we look forward to see you again before the Lord come in Pakistan. So if not, then we hopefully meet when he comes. Uh, at the end of uh, this uh, conversation, I want to say thank you. Big thanks to uh, two things that uh, I have learned from you. Uh, Pastor, uh, the one thing is transparent, transparent work in the, in the Lord's work, transparency in the Lord's work, and uh, uh, faithfulness to the Lord. I much appreciate your uh, love and concern for this. Uh, way that we, you you guide me, lead me, and uh, you 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 give me the vision so that the Lord work uh, will be more grow in in Pakistan. Thank you so much. God bless you. So we we as a family we are not three, we are four. But uh, my elder son is not with us, but he always uh, mm, talk about Pastor Andrew about you. And he has still not found yet Asha, but uh, he's growing, he's playing guitar, and he's six feet, uh, his height is six feet, and uh, we believe that when you will come, you will be very happy to see us, and we are looking forward to see you again in Pakistan with some other pastors, and uh, we know that you love us, you love Pakistan, and we love you too. God bless you. God bless you. Hi Andrew, Destiny here. First things first, what do you think? Don't worry, not hitting you up for sponsorship. This isn't for Movember, this is Big Jenks Ember. As soon as I heard you were retiring, it had to be done. Secondly, can I just confirm the 
rumours that Premier of Radio are reporting you not actually retiring and that the Pope has bidded a million pounds to transfer you over to play for the Catholics and that the NLT have accepted so that they can fund the comeback of the Pentecost Convention. I was going to start telling some funny stories, but as I wrote them down, it started to sound more of a eulogy and um, it did seem appropriate because I know you're getting on a bit. It did seem a tad premature, but family, please note I am available for that gig, uh, providing there's a good buffet. I would like to take this time, though, to say congratulations to you and to Joyce, because let's be honest, behind every great pastor is a great pastor's wife. And in this case, an even greater pastor's wife. And often, because they're not the ones on the platform, the, the wives often get um, put into the background. But um, you wouldn't be half the pastor you are without Joyce's support. So congratulations to the two of you on your, on your retirement. I've never been fortunate enough to actually have you as my pastor. But over the years, the two of you have influenced my life massively. Um, to an extent that probably only my family have done more. And I really want to thank you for those times, you know, the, the wisdom, the, the arms around, the, through the good and the bad. The two of you have always been there and I really thank you for that. And that won't stop now just because you're tired and don't think you've got an, an easy escape. Um, you're going to be a huge loss to your parishioners and to the church. And I would like to um, wish you all the best for the future. Your, you know, enjoy it, embrace it, live it. But don't turn into Victor and Margaret Maldrew. All the best. Hope to speak to you soon. Hi, Andrew and Joyce. We are glad to have the opportunity to publicly acknowledge our appreciation of everything you have done for us personally and for Vale Church. You've been a faithful pastor and an inspiration. The highest compliment I can give you is that I wish we had got to know you a lot sooner, as you are a good friend as well as a minister. We also appreciate the sacrifices that Joyce has made in supporting your ministry and we pray God's blessing on this next chapter of your lives together. We look forward to meeting you face to face once the Covid restrictions are relaxed. But until then, bye for now and God bless. Bye. bye. Hi Andrew, we just wanted to thank you so much for your faithfulness in the last three years in supporting Vale Church for all the times you've come down from Aberdeer, the late nights and uh, sometimes about many of us. So uh, we really appreciate it and we wish you well in terms of all your plans. Um, we were looking up a couple of verses. I've got one, I think Sarah's got one as well. Um, but from um, Psalm 92, it says, The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. They will still bear fruit in old age. They will stay fresh and green, proclaiming the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no wickedness in him. So just pray that in the next phase that um, things will go really well in terms of your new job up, uh, up uh, in uh, the northeast. And um, we look forward to trying to so we'll catch up with you in the next week. And Joyce, this is for you. Proverbs 31 tells us that a wife of noble character is very difficult to find. And she's worth far more than rubies. A husband can have full confidence in her and he lacks nothing of value. You have been that noble, excellent wife to Andrew. We thank you also, the same as Andrew, for your years of faithful service, for your gift of encouragement, and for your heartfelt love both to God, his kingdom, the church, and your husband. Thank you both. Just a few words to you both to say thank you for all the love, encouragement, and teaching that we've had from you over the past four years. You've clocked up a good few miles on your car to come and minister to us and we bless you for your commitment. And our prayer for you both is that in this new season of your lives that you'll not only find purpose but also see the Kingdom of God grow through your work. Lots of love, Jill and Keith. Hi Andrew! Hi Andrew! Andrew, I want to thank you for all your dedication to the Vale Church. We have really, really appreciate it and also for bringing that special warmth and transparency and relatability to your ministry. That also has been a great blessing to us. 
and not to mention your special brand of humour, which I know I miss. And I just want to say too that you brought such quality teaching and we were really blessed by it. So I just want to wish and pray you and Joyce a great blessing for your future. And I know God's going to use you mightily in the coming days and lots of love and hugs. I would just like to say, Andrew, that I have appreciated your friendship over recent years and, you know, all the one-to-one -one conversations that we have had. And also to thank you for all your teaching and, and, and your preaching. Uh, I found it very challenging and also very encouraging. And uh, we just want to uh, wish you all the best well, when you go up to the northeast of England to uh, carry out your chaplaincy work. It's something that is really needed at this time uh, in, in, the, in the work environment. So every blessing for the future. Andrew, I just wanted to say that I've really enjoyed be, you being pastor of Vale Church. Um, I've been really blessed by your teaching. I've really appreciated it. And uh, I just want to say I really miss you. And uh, I wish you and Joyce every blessing for the future. Uh, just one thing before we go. You notice that we are dressed for the occasion. Mm -hmm. Would you consider us for your calendar for next right. year? All the best. Bye. 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 Love to you and Joyce. Bye. Hi Andrew and Joyce. Just a note to say, praying God's richest blessing on you both as you retire and leave Park Central and start a new chapter in your life. Sorry not able to do this in person, but hope this goes a little way to saying all the best for the future. Hi, yeah, we just want to send you a message to say thank you for all your hard work and wish you all the best in the next chapter now of your retirement. Yeah, uh, thank you for everything you've done for us. And now we hope you enjoy it. Andrew, we'd like to thank you for being our pastor. We'd like to thank you for the blessings that you brought us and the inspiration that you've been as a pastor. We'd like to thank you for the way that you've opened up God's word and led us to a greater understanding of his word. And thank you for your obedience to God's word. We'd like to thank you for the kindness, the care and compassion you have brought us as our pastor. And on behalf of Babs and myself, we'd particularly like to thank you for the wonderful support you gave us both at the beginning of this year in a very difficult time. We will never forget this. We'd also like to thank you for the wisdom, the honesty, the laughter that you brought to us as a pastor. But there's one thing I've not been able to understand about you, Andrew. And I've struggled with this. The fact that you are a dragon supporter. I never realised until you came to us that there was a rugby team in Newport. But now I know. But we will forgive you for supporting them. Our prayer for you is that God will continue to bless you, Joyce, and your family in the future. And that you will know a fresh anointing in your new ministry. We pray that your retirement together will be a happy one. We pray that your retirement together will be a healthy one. And we pray that your retirement together will be a long one. And may God bless you both. Well, Andrew, I'd like to thank you for being such a wonderful friend to us, um, both in the church and personally, as Alan said when he had um, his illness at the beginning of the year. Uh, it went beyond your calling, and we got to know the real man that you are, uh, a wonderful friend, true and loyal, and we thank you from the bottom of our heart for that time spent with you. And as Alan said, the laughter uh, and the stories that you have are tremendous. Uh, we can never repay your kindness. And again, we'd like to bless you in all your future endeavours. Um, and I'm sure that the north of England will be blessed by you and Joyce's present. God bless you both. Amen. Amen.
Hi Andrew, hi Joyce. Just want to say thank you to you both for your ministry, your leadership, your friendship, your support and care over the last two years. It's been lovely spending time with you and, and getting to know you both. We're glad that you Ronderites have chosen to settle in Aberdeer. So have a happy retirement. We'll still be able to see you and thank you again. Hi, and this is uh, Retirement Day then. One of my first uh, recollections of you is from uh, youth camp in St Athens um, on the football field. In those days, you were known as Chopper Jenkins, and that was because if the ball got past you, the player didn't. So um, here you are some 32 years later at the end of your ministry, just hanging up your football boots and joining your wife in retirement. Um, as a couple, you've faithfully served the purposes of God in your life from um, Newcastle in the north to Newport in the south and through action overseas, I guess, Karachi in the uh, east to the mission field that is the Kenan Valley in the west. And in all of those places, you've been faithful. Um, it's been a privilege just serving on um, the leadership team at Park Central Church with you. I was looking for a little phrase um, that summed you up. And um, it's this, that uh, in Proverbs chapter uh, 10 and verse 9, it says, um, the man of integrity walks securely. And I describe you as a man of integrity through the good times and through the difficult times. Um, that phrase isn't used very often in the Bible. It's used of Job, it's used of David, and it's also used of Jesus in Mark chapter 12 and verse 14. And it says there that you are a man of integrity. You aren't swayed by men because you pay no attention to who they are, but you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. And that certainly is true of your life and true of your ministry. So for retirement now, I guess you can walk the hills behind your house, just scouring for logs to put on your log burner. Um, and although you're living on the side of the, the valley that's closest to the People's Republic of Rwanda, which I know is close to your heart, if you ever want a cup of tea, then you're welcome to come and join Karen and I on the sunny side of the valley. Have a happy retirement. It really is a bittersweet day knowing that this is Andrew and Joyce's last official Sunday with us. On one hand, we're really happy and excited to see what their future has in store, a period of rest, recuperation, relaxing, and spending some quality time together. Although nine months of lockdown together might have covered that last one off. On the other hand, I'm going to really miss Andrew and Joyce leading us and leading me in church. I'm slowly coming to the real realisation that all the stuff that currently goes on in the background without our knowledge won't just happen anymore. It actually has to be initiated and organised and implemented by someone. One of my earliest memories of Andrew was when we were playing football. I was a young 15 year old skinny little kid who thought he was the second coming of Lionel Messi. I came up against a short old man with the most glorious moustache imaginable. I thought this is gonna be easy. And after kickoff, I jogged to my position and felt studs rake down the back of my calf. I turn around and there was Andrew smirking. He leaned into me and he said, you're playing with the big boys now. And that taught me a great lesson to watch to observe, to learn from those more experienced than I, those who have been there and done it. I learned the dark arts of football, how to protect myself, to use my body to shield the ball, because at some point, my skill, my pace, my ability would fade, and that I'd have to adapt if I was to continue to play. And I've continued to learn from Andrew, watching him, observing him, learning from him, especially since he joined us in Aberdeer. And I can share a lot about the man that Andrew is and what he's like behind the scenes, but, but time has really gone today and, and I'll make sure to, th to, to share those with you at some point, Andrew. But just three things I want to share with you that have had a big impact on me and hopefully my ministry going forward. Firstly, Andrew, I have seen you live for and only for an audience of one. 
You've had to make some tough decisions and some tough choices since your arrival here, but you have not shied away from facing any difficulty head on, knowing that you were here to listen to and follow God's will and his will alone. You've been attuned to his leading and direction and have followed it completely with absolute conviction. Secondly, your absolute dedication to the local church and serving us to the best of your ability. You've taken so much on your shoulders and you've shielded me and the congregation from a number of issues. You've also taken on extra responsibility when I've been unable to do something and you've never put me under any pressure. Rather, you have taken that pressure and put it on your own shoulders to prepare, to cover and lead various things, often at last minute. And you've done all of this whilst going through some difficult personal circumstances and personal moments yourself. You've never used your personal life as an excuse to not deliver at church. I'm going to miss asking how you're doing and you responding, champion. Finally, your absolute commitment to seeing people come to know Jesus. I remember one of our first prayer meetings where we listed all the different towns and villages in the Canaan Valley. And we lit a candle for each one and prayed for that specific area. that people from the top to the bottom of the valley would know Jesus. Whether you're talking about the 68, the 72, the 75,000 people, that number tended to be flexible week to week. The nations that you visited and worked with through Action Overseas, the boys in the football team that you coached, or your friendly local barber, your heart and desire is to tell people about the reality of the gospel and the saving power of Jesus Christ. And when we first heard that we could no longer meet in person and had to move church online, you immediately saw it as an opportunity for outreach. That people outside of our church, people who might not be Christians or have ever heard the gospel before, can hear about Jesus, the cross, grace, what it means to be saved. Your heart for the lost is undeniable and it would be remiss of me today not to highlight that. For everybody watching this today, know that God sent his son Jesus to this earth, the same earth that we walk on today as a perfect sacrifice, the only perfect being, and that he was sent to die for you and for me, for our sins. You know, we were born into sin. We were born separated from God. Sin isn't necessarily about doing bad things or being a bad person. Sin is about our inability to be good according to God's definition of good. The Bible says, in fact, Jesus says that only God is good. It says in Romans 3 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Everybody, there is nobody that measures up to God's standards on their own. That's why God sent Jesus. There is nothing that you can do on your own to earn your way into heaven or to gain God's favour. And Paul writes in Ephesians that it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is a gift from God. And if you've not accepted or received that glorious free gift from God, then I'd I'd encourage you to do so today. Right now, talk to somebody about it. Comment in this video. Text somebody. Give them a ring. Send us a message on social media. Contact Andrew and Joyce. If you've got questions, please reach out. That gift is there today for the taking. Andrew and Joyce have dedicated the majority of their lives to telling people about Jesus, not for their own sake or for their own glory, but to show the kingdom of God here on earth today. Why? Because he is real, because he is able to transform lives, because he and he alone is able to save. I just wanted to say one last thank you for everything you've done We appreciate you probably more than you know. We'll miss you, but we're also really glad that it's not a goodbye and a farewell, but a so long and see you soon. Esther's going to pray now, and then we're going to finish the service with two messages from the two people that know you best. Before I pray, just to end, I just wanted to say personally, you know, how much your ministry and your friendship has meant to me. Uh, since you've been our pastor you know people see the Andrew that's public but you know we've been privileged enough to know you personally and to know you uh, intimately and you know 
there's a little moments when you take time to encourage somebody or support somebody or visit somebody's sick family members I know that my family has really appreciated those things that you do behind the scenes and they've meant more than you know so thank you I'm just going to pray now thank you Lord for Andrew and Joyce thank you for the people that they are thank you that they've both got their own personalities and their own differences and their own interests and their own giftings and we really really have appreciated having them with us what a blessing they've been to us at Park Church. Thank you for their servant hearts. Thank you for bestowing on them all of the necessary graces for them to carry out the work that you've set before them. Thank you for sustaining them and for guiding them, for providing them with everything that they've needed for the path that you've led them on. Thank you for their commitment, for their endurance and the sacrifices that they've made for you. Thank you that we can know that they can know that the seeds sown and planted during their ministry have borne fruit already and will continue to bear fruit in your good time. We give you glory for that. Over the years, they've been obedient to your calling, even when it hasn't been easy for them. And they've always done it willingly. And in this next chapter, I just pray that you would grant them favour, that you would bless them, that you would continue to go before them and uphold them. Would you bring them joy in this new season? and pour into them and their family as they get to enjoy time together. We pray all this in your name. Amen. Amen. Hello both. Greetings from the frozen north. Uh, just a quick note from us to say uh, congratulations on your retirement. Uh, we are very, very proud of everything that uh, you've achieved within the Apostolic Church and uh, Dad, your work with Action Overseas. Um, so it's a big thumbs up from us. We are, however, really, really excited to see a lot more of you, and I know the girls are as well. So, uh, congratulations on your retirement, and we'll see you soon. Love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. Hey, Dad. Just a, a quick message to say um, happy retirement. Um, I've had the privilege of being able to call you Dad and Pastor in my time, um, but I just want to say how proud I am of who you are, um, what you've achieved. Um, because without any of that, I don't think I'd be half a man I am today. So I just want to say thank you on a personal level there. Um, further to that, I just hope and pray that life from you on in is happy, content, uh, and relaxing as it can be. Um, I know it hasn't always been easy, um, but through all of them periods, you showed how strong you were. But more than that, you proved God. And they are things I won't forget either, along with others. And that goes for you as well, Mum. Um, this hasn't been a solo mission, other than the uh, travelling to five-star hotels. He seemed to do it on his own, but... Um, as a couple, I'm a bit biased because you're my parents, but we haven't been without our ups and downs. Um, but I can honestly say how proud I am of you both. Um, you deserve every happiness from your on in. All right, love you both. Take care.